Hello everybody, welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at a different kind of mainframe software. In fact, um, today we're going to be doing something on the mainframe that doesn't even involve Hercules at all. Um, and that's because today we're going to be looking at a mainframe operating system called Music SP. Um, and we're going to be look, uh, following me as I install this software on, uh, on my computer here and get it to run. And I will either fail or succeed. I've never done this before. I saw it once running on a friend's computer, um, but I don't really, um, I, I have no experience in getting it to, to run. So um, we're gonna be doing this together and hopefully from my mistakes, we'll, we're all gonna learn something. And if we get it to run, we're gonna explore it a little bit more. So let's get started. I know that um, the music operating system was conceived in the 70s at McGill University, yeah, here. Um, he was a follow-on uh, software uh, to this RAX, Remote Access uh, Computing System, that was developed for by IBM for uh, uh, time sharing in the very early 70s. Um, you have to think here in the, in the proper context, time sharing uh, is something that came up around 64, 65. It was a new way to do computing. Before that, everything was batched. You put in your punch cards in the computer and get the printout uh, or a tape uh, minutes sometimes hours later and um and then and then at dartmouth university one of the leaders back then as well as michigan university they started to work on a new approach which is terminals because terminals started to come up back then and not talking terminals with a screen i'm talking about terminals that were just typewriters um connected to a computer and and you could now talk to the computer and the computer would answer to you and that was a new a novel approach um, that spawned a whole new research era in computing and computer science um, on how to, uh, you know, on how to interact with the with the with the user in an appropriate way. And this is something that we're still, I would say, struggling with today. Um, today, it's less about response time as as it was back then. The response time was the major. Um, concern back then because computers were not built for um, responsive computing they were built for batch processing um, but also in terms of user interface and in terms of ease of use all those things were foreign concepts in the mid 60s and so um, many institutions started and even some individuals started to write their own uh, time sharing um, systems IBM uh, tried first TSS, uh, which was to be their their time sharing system. TSS stands for time sharing system. But uh, even though it was elegantly designed, uh, it never really ran very well. And by the time it ran well, uh, people had already given up hope on it. And so that failed. Um, I think it can be gotten uh, on the internet. I once, I think I had the TSS IBM time I had TSS once running on a system. Um, there is somewhere a an image of it, uh, but it's not very stable. And uh, and so many many institutions wrote their own time sharing systems. And that's also when time sharing services started to come up. Those were companies that owned a couple of one or a couple of mainframes, and they started to sell out compute time on a time sharing system. Music SP was the one conceived by McGill University ran on the, it says you on the three IBM S360, 70, and the lower end mainframe that came on afterwards. Um, it, is, it is a significant operating system, and that's why we're gonna be exploring it today, because it had all of the main components that you would need for a modern operating system, such as virtual memory, file system. Uh, in 1991, Music SP introduced a, a tree-structured um, file system, such as we have of course, today on uh, on DOS, Windows, and Linux, and Unix, as well as um, as well as permissions on files and, uh, and many other things. So, um, I um, there was a reader uh, who asked for me to make a video of that today. It's Sunday, and I thought 
we're just going to be sitting here and get this to run. Um, so let's see where we can get a copy of this image. Uh, music stands for multi-user system for interactive computing. Um, and um, it had at its peak, I think it was running about 250 universities worldwide. It was really an academic operating system. I know that BASIC, Fortran, COBOL, PL1, uh, Pascal all ran on this operating system. And uh, let's see if we can get this uh, to run. Where can I find? Uh, this is MBS. Let's see if here, it also, by the way, it's also one of the first operating systems to have email and uh, TCP IP built in for the mainframe. Um, I think, you know, in terms of research and development, it was it was keeping up with Unix pretty well for a number of years. Um, okay, so, okay, we found the downloads. That's 6.2. Uh, okay, let's start to download this. And I also know that it, while it does run on Hercules, uh, I know there's some limitations. Um, there was a person who was one of the main contributors of, of the music operating system at McGill University, uh, this uh, late date Dave Edwards. Unfortunately, he's passed away. He was one of the shining lights of uh, mainframe operating systems, but he passed away, I think, around 2009, 2010. And so this is kind of um, almost an abandoned web page. I know some people are still keeping it up, but unfortunately, Dave Edwards has passed away, uh, such as so many of the great mainframe uh, world people uh, have already and continue to pass away. Unfortunately, the mainframe is something that's primarily an art to people in the 70s and sometimes 80s. And so uh, quite a few of them uh, Fortunately, move on to a better world. Um, so it says here that uh, this uh, mainframe emulator, so that's not Hercules. He, Dave Edwards wrote a mainframe emulator, an instruction set emulator called SIM390. So let's download this uh, and uh, let's start it up. Show in Finder. Okay, so let's create um, a new directory, a folder as Windows calls it, and let's move everything in here. I think that's the first step. Um, not that big, it's only a couple hundred kilobytes. Let's open the, the README. So there's a zip file which contains the latest version. After loading zip file, check its MD. Use WinZip uh, to start. Enter the following command in command prompt. Okay, so this will require the a DOS command. By the way, uh, the DOS command is something that is scheduled to disappear from Windows. At some point, it's not going to be there anymore. So we will, in the in the Hercules and, and, and emulator world, such as MH, we'll have to one day adapt to this. The DOS prompt is not going to be here much longer. Um, we'll have to get used to this. Um, okay, so it needs a configuration file. And I guess if we open this, Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't copy the README because that will overwrite the other README. But let's copy this over here. And then we can rename it into music. Okay. Uh, let's see what the README says. Okay. Okay, the reasons why you want to run music SP, obviously the, all the same reasons why we run stuff in Hercules, your real mainframe music system no longer exists because there is no more music system running in production today. Uh, but you still have some software you want to run on it. You want to learn about mainframe, about how mainframe operates, which is what we're doing. Music TCP programs are not working correctly. You want to trace all the socket calls. You want an easy FTP server on your uh, PC. Music server programs because of the... Uh, okay. 
This is a 150 megabyte binary file that contains the FBA, which is FBA stands for fixed block architecture. Um, okay, so this is how we start. Okay, so let's go here. Um, this should be as simple as uh, As just doing this command here, um, sim 390, and then we give it um, this config file music x, if, uh, nope, music, we want this thing here, so music xdm. Um, Command will show be entered via start, run, or in a command window. The above command opens two windows. The control window, which is kind of like the Hercules window, I guess. And then operating messages, which is like a console. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> that was, as they say, anticlimactic. Um, did work this time uh, as very often in computing science if it doesn't work the first time just try again later um, so here is the operator console and here we have okay yeah here we have the mainframe um, some things we recognize immediately it's in supervisor state it's in the uh, the uh, program status word is uh, set here we have a nine megabytes um, mainframe and and um, let's see how to get this started um, started use the CPU to IPL from device 201 okay some things are just architecture dependent so we have devices obviously numbered in the old day by three digits nowadays it's four and let's see if we can get this to run. Um, IP, oops, I, IPL from device 201. Um, supply blank record, specifying the option Apply bank records for first console read. Let's see if we clear that. Okay. Some error messages relating to terminal sets are normal during music ISPL. Add local. Okay. So let's try this. 201. And nothing happens. The device number does not exist. Oh, because, yeah, here is error. So let's close and start again. Why is it not reading this? Users. found oh he wants it to be in this directory okay so um, let's do that let's copy all of that and let's go to the root directory of C and let's paste it here and then we copy change it to 
SIM390DM. Okay, rename SIM390DM. Okay, um, so that should work now. Uh, let's go back. Okay, now what we're going to do is um, I guess we should have opened this file here. Yeah, that's what happens when you work too fast. Open. Uh, oh, I think there's a notepad. Yeah. Okay, so let's try this. It should work now. Um, we do sim 390 uh, music xdm and close this one ah let's close them all again sorry about this folks uh, okay okay so now we don't have the error anymore and let's go to CPU IPL 201 supply blank record. Allow access. I don't know what that is. Some window thing. Um, and looks like it's running. Now it tells us to uh, open up a um, a a 3270 emulator. It doesn't say where we should connect. Let's try 3270. Nope. I press enter to get the music sign on screen, but it doesn't say to which port. Does it tell us? It doesn't tell us here which port. <clears throat> I press 008. Let's try. What port should we connect to? To sign on to music, select add local. Oh, okay. Add. Where do we have add local? Select add local 3270 sessions from the file menu. I don't have add local. Oh, here it is. Um, let's do 4380. Oh, okay. So we're there we are, up and running. And, sorry, just kicked the basket um, bin here under my, the garbage bin under my desk. Um, press, press the enter key to view the next page when you see this message. Okay, you're pressing enter. Music ID, it says here to use $00's user ID and music as the password. Let's do that. Dollar zero zero music. I last signed on in 2006, um, June 22nd, 2006. So that's 12 years ago. Um, that's shortly after my son was born. Um, okay. You can now enter music commands such as edit view, library, sys date, etc. When finished, use the off command to sign up for music. Can I add more local sessions? Okay. Uh, remote, so you can. When signed on, it is one of several modes. Full screen mode. You can press F3 to exit admin, which puts you into go mode, which is a line-by-line -line command, such as Unix. Uh, you can enter operating console once via the... Okay. All right, so let's start exploring. I press enter. Conditions of use. Uh, do you accept? Yes. Whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is how this looks. Let's do this full screen. Uh, hopefully you can all see this. Information statistical functions. Let's start with one. Uh, terminal buffer utilization, system usage counters. Let's do six. 
system load on February 4th, 2018 processors. Okay, so F3 takes us back up a level. Active signed on users. That should be just me. Um, active 4, those may be just batch jobs or other uh, subsystems. Um, okay. The calendar seems to work right. Um, the time is correct, the date is correct. Uh, working with the file system. Display daily archive, return last daily archive request. Mm, system tailoring task. Display batch job information, full screen interface. That's probably the editor. Splapped from batch execution. Um, Description and function usage, what's new? Let's do 13. There's nothing new. Uh, 9. Okay, so let's try. Programming, which is my primarily primary internet uh, in interest. Type cal to see the calendar of the month. I don't want the calendar. I want place the cursor on an item, press enter. I did. Okay. That's the mail facility. Read incoming mail. Uh, no incoming mail. Why can't I not program? Uh, let's do more. Conf man, conf conference manager. I know that that music used to have a very extensive um, conferencing system, uh, which is called like forums and chat, uh, called um, called Conf, uh, and it had statistical package. APL was present. Uh, let's try basic. Final accessible. Yeah, I would have to read the uh, the manual on that. Now we're in the Go interface that I was mentioning before, which is like the command line interface. Let's see if it has basic, uh, basic in progress, basic. And it print hello YouTube from Moshix. One hundred and twenty. Um, for i equals 1 to 10, 3, print, hello YouTube, hello, no tricks, and friend, channel, 140, next, i, sorry, print, this is the end, my friend. 160 and run. Uh, saved. Run 100. Save. Moshix. Okay, that was saved. How do I compile? Compile. File not accessible. Help. IPM basic compiler call system music command or system music command can be used from a basic hmm that doesn't help um, VS basic syntax basic parameter that's about it Okay, this is the help file for the basic compiler. Control statement set up. Okay, how do we... List, no list. This sounds like IBM. 
Um, so it is there, load VS Basic. I don't know how to compile on this thing. I have some readers who use music. Maybe they can put post in the in the comments below this video um, some help on how to get this to compile. Um, I don't really know. Um, uh, Fortran. Okay. It. Uh, okay. So this are files we have here so the this is the this is a already a true uh, tree directory structure because we have the directory root they, which they probably took as a as a paradigm from Unix uh, here's my file okay plief vsam we have pli obviously um, we have an editor run hello run more ships in progress nah. uh, nobody knows what that I mean I don't know how to get this to run um, but this is um, something you may want to explore I know that one of the readers is uh, writing a whole uh, CRM application on top of uh, of um, music sp sp is the one that has already um, uh, virtual memory it has the file system it has tcp ip and um, but we would have to find out how to get things to compile maybe i'll do a follow-on video once we get this running but uh, for now this is how you get music up and running uh, off signs you off it gives you this beautiful uh, 80 style um, login screen um, and um, I guess I'll just stop it here and make this a very short and uh, fun video uh, how to get this operating system up and running. Hopefully we'll have a photo follow on video on how to actually get things done in music uh, with these uh, languages. Um, but um, I am, as far as I'm concerned, this is all that I really can do right now because I don't know enough about this operating system. So, um, Thank you for watching. Uh, if you thought this was a fun video or a useful video, please press on the thumbs up button. Uh, please do subscribe to the Moshix Mainframe channel to get uh, notified of future videos I will be releasing and I'm already working on several of those. And for the rest, uh, um, um, just wish you a nice uh, day and uh, come back soon. Thank